Mancera fragrances. One of the most affordable ways to dive into niche fragrances. One of the best niche houses because you're getting performance and high quality for your money. A lot of options too. And today I want to discuss the 10 that I own and we're going to rank them from my, fav my least favorite to my favorite. Stay tuned. So quick disclaimer, I'm not by any means saying these are the 10 best Manceras available. These are the 10 I own. Obviously, I enjoy all of these. That's why I bought these 10. And definitely not going to be the end of the road for me. I do plan on getting a lot more Mancera in the future. So let's get into the first one. So with this first one, it's a little bit on the feminine side. It really is. It's marketed more towards the ladies. But it's such a beautiful creamy vanilla. The way the white peach and the black currant comes off with the jasmine, it's just a gorgeous fragrance. The dry down's incredible and it's extremely powerful. We're talking about black vanilla from Mancera. It's super, super powerful. Man, it's been a little bit since I've smelled it. It's so good, guys. This one tends to get overlooked. It's kind of hidden gem territory from Mancera. Some people know about it, but for the most, it doesn't get talked about a lot, you know? It's from the same line as Red Tobacco, as it has the same style bottle. It's just a translucent black or very, very, very dark gray, almost black translucent color. It's from the same line. It's just as powerful. It, that whole line is full of just bombs from a projection and longevity standpoint, but this is a gorgeous vanilla. Vanilla lovers should strongly consider trying this one. It might be a little too feminine for some, that's why I say try it. This is not one that I would just blind buy if I were you, or if I were most, even though I blind bought it, but that's me, I like to blind buy. Definitely sample this one first, because like I said, it could be a little too feminine for some, but if you're into florals and vanilla, very good fragrance from Mansfera, Black Vanilla. Next, this is another one that kind of flies under the radar and not too many people talk about. Oud Blue Notes. Yes, not that many people talk about this one, at, if at all, really. Uh, picture some fresh fruits up top, with some beautiful florals, and some woods. Very powdery, very, very floral. Oris and Violet dominate this composition for actually a not too feminine fragrance. This is very unisex, obviously. It's very fresh up top, very, very floral, and woody in the dry down. It's a floral lover's dream because it's powerful as well. It's very, very powerful, and it's versatile enough to work in most seasons. If you have very hot summers, I wouldn't suggest wearing this in very hot summers, but spring, fall, and definitely in the winter, it's more than powerful enough to handle that. So you can still have some freshness in those colder months because the floral and woody backbone of this fragrance has such a strong density that it's going to cut through the cold very easily. And it's not so dense that it works well in warmer spring days and warmer fall days. I just wouldn't do super, super hot summertime days, but kind of a hidden gem from Mancera. Doesn't really get talked about. Has a similar bottle to Oud Lemon Mint with that gradient design that goes from blue to green to yellow. Beautiful, beautiful bottle and even more beautiful of a scent. This next one, not for the faint of heart. This is some potent and pungent stuff right here. Mancera, the Oud. Oh man. Not for the faint of heart. It's kind of an understatement. I don't even need to spray this one because it's going to radiate out of this atomizer. Oud and rose, and I mean a lot of oud. Very pungent, extremely medicinal, Bible pew type of stuff. Very biblical kind of scent, if you know what I mean. I only like to wear this one in the cold because it's just too much if it's warm. It's gonna get cloying. But this is my favorite straight up 
oud dominant fragrance because this is a potent and powerful oud through and through and it's very recognizable this is going to be polarizing to a lot of people for the wearer and those around you because it's dominating oud and rose so if you don't like oud and rose you're going to pass on this one if those around you can't stand the smell of oud and rose they're not going to like the way you smell they're going to want to get away from you but in the event that someone can appreciate this fragrance for what it is, which I absolutely can. And I've gotten several compliments with this one as well. I haven't had anybody say anything negative about it, but I have gotten several compliments about this one where they straight up said, ooh, is that a oud I smell? It's very distinct. Mancera, the oud, very, very overlooked fragrance from the house. They do so many different ouds that it's easy for stuff like this to get lost in the shuffle from the house. But I'm telling you, if you want a strong, powerful, pungent oud, something that's going to be different from the other ouds in your collection, give this one a try. Next is the newest Mancera to my collection that I am just head over heels in love with at the moment. It's 2019 release, Crazy for Oud. I just did a full review on this one. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, I'll put it right there for you. Crazy for Oud is an interesting name. It doesn't tell the story of the fragrance, in my opinion, because yes, there's a beautiful, high quality Oud in this one, but it's so well blended, it's not an overpowering and pungent Oud because the tiramisu note in this really smooths and rounds it off with that kind of chocolatey, boozy, coffee cake type of note that you get through and through with a beautiful soft leather that's up top that fades into the dry down. A little bit of patchouli and rose with some more underlying supporting florals like magnolia and jasmine that don't really jump out at me too heavy. And some woody notes that go really well with the vanilla in the dry down. It's a little musky. It's very nuanced. I have a lot to say about this one because I just recently, I just wore it over the last few days. I've been testing it over the previous days before that and I just did a full review on it. So. I'm going to be a bit, it's going to be a mouthful when I'm talking about this particular one because it's so fresh for me. It's really understated how good of an oud this is. And it's not an advanced user's wear to where it's a challenging oud. That's the beauty of it. It's quite wearable. If you like sweet fragrances, this is actually a good way to dive into oud in my opinion. It's got the power that Mancera is known for. I'm really digging this one crazy for oud. Next, this got a lot of hype when it came out, and for good reason. It's kind of a floral take on Baccarat Rouge 540, if you will. It's Instant Crush from Mancera. This one has the newer style magnetic caps instead of the screw top. Beautiful. I love this one. Saffron, Jasmine, and Amberwood really stand out to me in this one. It's super long lasting this is a powerful potent beast mode fragrance for sure little heavy on the floral aspect that's why i say it's more of a floral take on baccarat rouge 540 if you will it's not going to be for everyone but for anybody that likes floral fragrances or is a fan of baccarat rouge 540 you'll like instant crush and the prices have come down quite a bit you can get them for around 74 75 bucks from kingdom fragrances when he has them in stock which, like I said before, is always linked below. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone. But if you're a big fan of florals, you'll love Instant Crush. It's not my favorite Mancera, but it's definitely up there. Because <sighs> it's just so good. One of my favorite floral fragrances from Mancera, if that helps. Instant Crush. This is another one that's very underrated that kind of flies under the radar. I did a review on it back in the spring and I'm a firm believer if you're looking for a really good fresh niche fragrance from Mancera for, in particular, you need to get your hands on Wave Musk. Very green, very airy and aquatic. The grass note in here is extremely believable. It's very, very, very fresh and ozonic. It wafts easy in the air. It's an eight hour fresh fragrance. It doesn't smell synthetic to me. It's got a little bit of sea salt that's just believable. This fragrance is believable. What you see is what you get with it. It's actually quite nuanced for being a fresh fragrance, and this one impressed me from the start. This is a must-have in the spring and summer, hot weather in general to me. 
if you're a niche fragrance lover or you enjoy Mancera fragrances in general, this is one of the best fresh fragrances from the house that doesn't get talked about much. It's very, very good. Not super easy to find, but it's out there. It's pretty readily available. You just have to look. It's not always at the usual suspects and it's not that expensive. You can find this one in the $70 to $80 range for sure. And it's worth every penny. Strong enough to work year round if you really want to wear it year round and make it your signature scent. It's worthy of it. Compliment factors there because it's such a beautiful fresh fragrance. It's one of my favorite niche fragrances overall for the summer. One of my favorite Mancera's, Wave Musk. Next, the color of the bottle can be a little misleading because I don't suggest really wearing this one in the hottest of summers. Maybe one or two sprays because it's so creamy it can, and powerful, it can be a little much in the hottest of weather, but spring, fall, winter, oh yeah. Oud Lemon Mint is really gonna shine. This is one of the better fragrances from the house. One of the best, really and truly. Kind of a must have if you're starting to collect Mancera's. The lemon, the oud, the creaminess of this one is just, oh, this almond just adds to that creaminess. It's so good. It's so beautiful. It's a beast mode performer. It's a compliment machine. It's extremely versatile. One of the more wearable ouds on the market because the oud's not heavy in this. It's really not. It is such a beautiful fragrance. It's so well done. I actually did a full review with Chad from A Gentleman's Journey on his channel on this fragrance. Man, you want to talk must-haves? Oud Lemon Mint. This is a must-have. This stuff is so good. And it doesn't smell like anything else. Not anything I've ever smelled anyways. That's the most prominent things to me is the almond oud and the lemon. Just whew, creamy, woody, citrusy, and delightful. Oud Lemon Mint. Mancera. So if I'm saying that about my fourth favorite, these top three must really be something special. And to me... They absolutely are. Oud Vani. Underrated, underappreciated, overlooked, and it's just outrageous that that's the case. Because it's like roasting marshmallows over a fire, is how I can put this one easily. It's vanilla, it's got a burning wood smell from this oud. It lasts forever. It's very unisex. Ladies, you can easily wear this when it's not masculine. Guys, I'm not saying it's feminine in any way. This is right in that line of unisex. It doesn't lean either way. Anybody can wear this one that likes vanilla and oud. This is so well done and so well blended. This is a must have for the colder months. It really is. It's warm. It's sweet and sexy without being overly sweet. Like I said, it's like roasting marshmallows by the fire. It's got a burning wood type of smell, but a good burning wood type of smell, if you really follow me. All day spray, very pronounced is a good way to put this one. I'm not gonna say a beast mode projector, but it's pretty close. Very, very pronounced, makes a statement. And it's going to be very inviting to those around you. A cuddling fragrance, if you will. The lady's going to want to snuggle up to you and probably want to steal sprays. Eud Vani. Now, the reason this one's so high up of these 10, it's, there's only one ahead of it, is because it's so versatile. It's so pleasing. This is probably the most mass appealing fragrance on this list, or from the house in general. It's one of the best ways to dip your toe into niche fragrances because it's so readily available, so cheap to get for a niche high quality performing fragrance. And it's kind of an Aventus killer in essence because the price per ml for the value, it's kind of better than Aventus from a value standpoint. Cedrat Boise. Who doesn't love Cedrat Boise? Performs, smells incredible. It works year round in every situation. It dresses up, it dresses down. It's a compliment machine. It's great. This fragrance 
is great. I just recently did a review on this one as well. If you haven't seen that yet, put that right there for you. Long overdue review. I've been meaning to do that one for a long time. I went through a decant before I got this bottle and I've started to pull some sprays out of the bottle. I've worn out of this bottle probably a handful of times. And that 10 ml decant I had took me several wearings as well. Worn it many times. I love it. It always works. Most of the time I get some type of positive attention from somebody wants to know what I'm wearing or wants to tell me how good it smells or something like that. This is an easy reach. This is probably the easiest reach of these 10. Works in every situation. It could arguably be number one because it's the most popular and it's the most useful of the Manceras I own. It's a Drapoise. A lot of you already knew what my favorite was going to be. The second you saw the thumbnail and the title of the video, hell, it's in the thumbnail. Mancera Red Tobacco. One of the most must-have niche fragrances for colder months. This and Cidre Boise are the two must-haves, in my opinion, from the house. Because this is their best cold weather fragrance, in my opinion. And Cidre Boise is their best versatile fragrance, in my opinion. These are all my opinions. Yours may differ, but most will agree with me. Because these are the two most sold bottles as far as I know from the brand. This stuff is so freaking powerful and delightful. <sighs> Compliment machine. It is, and it's nuclear. The performance is nuclear. 16 plus hours on clothes, God knows how many days until they get washed. If it's two or three days before your clothes get washed, it'll still smell like it. Easily. Very loud fills a room performance. This is beast mode if there ever was a beast mode. This is beyond beast mode. That's why I say nuclear. This is a nuclear performer. It is exquisite. It's beautiful. You can get it so cheap for what it is. The value is there. Kingdom Fragrances, I'm telling you, they got some really good prices. Venba Fragrances as well. Great prices on Mancera's. That's the two spots I highly suggest you check out because the prices and the selections are great and this is the one for the colder months it's an absolute must-have and my favorite tobacco fragrance mancera red tobacco well guys that's the 10 manceras i currently own and that's the order in which i would rank them i love all 10 that's why i bought all 10 that's why i wear all 10 that's why i suggest all 10 for different reasons to you guys they're all great fragrances, and there's so, so many more I want to get. I haven't even started diving into Montal, really, because I'm still diving into Mancera. There's just so many good fragrances out there, guys. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. I love hearing from you guys. How many of these 10 do you have? Which, in my opinions, did you completely agree with? Which did you disagree with? It's okay. Fragrances are subjective. You're not going to feel the exact same way I will about every single fragrance. Let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I will say, if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, I'm very confident that you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.